have found a problem with the Torah, and it's a big one. Hi, this is Barry Phelps with 10-Minute Torah, day two of Mishpatim. Let's stay in Shemot Exodus chapter number 21 and drop down now to verse number 12. He who strikes a man so that he dies shall certainly be put to death. But if he did not lie in wait, but Elohim delivered him into his hand, then I shall appoint for you a place where he is to flee. But when a man acts presumptuously against his neighbor to kill him by treachery, you are to take him even from my slaughter place to die. And he who strikes his father or his mother shall certainly be put to death. And he who kidnaps a man and sells him, or if he is found in his hands, shall certainly be put to death. And he who curses his father or his mother shall certainly be put to death. And the list goes on. These verses and others that are contained in this Torah portion reveal to us that there is a major, major problem with Torah. Before we get into the problem of Torah, I want to make a very important statement to you. Maybe you want to write this down. Rewind and write it down. Rewind and write it down. Ever how many times it takes. When Yahweh seeks to have fellowship with those who draw near to him, he does not and will not lessen his set apartness to do so, but rather he elevates those to whom he calls. So we yearn to connect with him. He wants us to connect with him. He yearns for our fellowship. But he's not going to change his nature. He's not going to lessen his quality of set-apartness to make it easier for us to find him or to become more accessible to him. The only alternative available then is to raise us up. One might say, well, what about Philippians where it says that Yeshua laid aside that which was his deity. Did he not lessen himself? Even though he took on the physical form of humanity, he who resided within that humanity did not lessen his quality of set-apartness. Matter of fact, it was that quality of set-apartness that caused such chagrin and animosity and angst, if you will, from those that were religious in their leadership around him. They couldn't trip him up. Why? Because he didn't lessen himself. He remained as he was, yet revealed and encapsulated before us through flesh. So what is the problem with the Torah? The problem with the Torah, and it's a major one, is man. We are the problem. It's not the words. It's not the commands. It's not the one who gave it or gave them. It's us. According to uh, Hasidic thought, and this is good, when Yah gave the ten words to Israel, he gave himself, his very essence, contained within these ten words. Further, Hasidic thought says that as we read these words, study them, contemplate them, and put them into action within our own lives, we are connecting vitally to the very soul of the Creator, to the very essence of His being, because the words are Him. This is borne out to us in Yochanan or John 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. Yeshua cannot be separated from the Word. He is the living embodiment of the Word. 
the way I like to describe him is he is the living, breathing, walking Torah scroll that is revealed right in front of our eyes. So as we read these commands that deal with violence, with arguments that lead to fistfights, kidnapping, cursing or striking your parents and other issues that are to be revealed that are even more negative. Why then are these things given to an imperfect people? Because Yah seeks to draw this imperfect people to himself so that we might be able to rightly relate to him. So he is not lessening himself, he is elevating us. Let's go over to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 8, beginning with verse number 6. But now he, that is Yeshua, has obtained a more excellent service inasmuch as he is mediator also of a better covenant which was constituted on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. There's a problem with the Torah. It had a fault. Yeah. And it's revealed to us in verse 8. We're finding fault with them. It's not the words. People who condemn the Torah and throw off on the legitimacy of the Torah, the law as it is commonly referred to, that it needs to be and has been done away with, and rightly so in their estimation. The problem's not with the word or the commands or the requirements. The problem is with the people who seek to read them, study them, and apply them. In other words, them and us. Finding fault with them, he says, See, the days are coming, says Yahweh, when I shall conclude with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehudah a renewed covenant, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Mitzrayim, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says Yahweh, because this is the covenant I shall make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh, giving my laws in their mind. And I shall write them on their hearts, and they shall be, I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. What this says then is that Yah is going to enable us to internalize the Torah so that it becomes one with our very being, and then we began to lead a transformed life. Now you can read and study the Torah and you can memorize the commands, and you can richly go through all of the requirements and never be changed because the Torah was never given to us to redeem us. Rather, as Rav Shul points out several times, it was given to us to point out where our sin lies, to show us where we're walking in error. The understanding is that we will do one of two things. Finding our error we will either continue in that era out of a rebellious heart toward Yah. No one's going to tell me what to do or how to do it. Or we're going to submit ourselves to the convicting power of the Ruach of Kodesh, the Holy Spirit, and apply the necessary changes. Whereas a, a, an individual may simply go through the motions of the Torah and never be changed, even though their behavior may line up, inwardly they might not be changed. It requires an inward change in then applying the Torah to achieve righteousness. If we are born again and we walk disobediently, we're not living righteously. It takes both. It allows the, the Torah to reveal our sin bring conviction, we turn from the sin, we repent, we submit ourselves under the mastery of Yahweh our Elohim, and then we go back to the Torah and we start applying positively the things that he has given to us. Because in doing so, 
we're not just keeping the rules. We're absorbing the very essence and quality of Yah into our lives. And I'll see you again tomorrow. To the Shalom.